What are you doing there, Tracy? <laughs> I'm pinging for a left displaced album mason. Oh, and what does it sound like? It sounds like if you flick a basketball. Or I like to say if you're, if your you're floating it. down the river and you ping your tire. Could be that too. Your it's inner a high tube? metallic yeah. pitch. Yep. So she definitely has an LDA. And then she also, when you blot her, you can hear it splashing. If we do that, you can hear it go up, cling, cling, cling. Uh huh. So she's prepping the surgery site right now. She'll dead in the area so the cow won't feel anything. Tracy's a professional. <laughs> Sanitizing. Surgical scrub. Surgical scrub is there you go. Technical term. <laughs> and I just gave her a little bit of a sedative with some xylazine. So just take the edge off for her so she feels a little bit more comfortable with everything. And this is the end of your 12-hour shift? Uh, yes. So she pulled an all-nighter. <laughs> well, I got to sleep, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, she got to sleep. Yeah. And I told her if I would have known, I would have called earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but then I get to end my shift so nicely. That's right. <laughs> On video. Yep. That's a big old syringe and needle. <laughs> So I'm drawing out lidocaine, and this will be our local anesthetic. Local anesthetic. For the cow. Lidocaine. So when I do a reverse, um, an inverted L block for the skin and on the muscle, so that she's not going to feel my incision. Not going to feel a thing. Nope. So I start up here because all the nerves are coming out of the spine and they're coming in this direction. So we're going to block them here so that they can't get to the surgery site. I learned something today. That <laughs> makes sense though. Yep. So when you don't know exactly where the nerves are, but you know where they should be. So I do a little bit of a kind of a tattoo method to get these also, she can't feel it, and then I do a little bit under the skin too, because the skin is the last thing to get. To the surgical scrub before we actually make our incision. So I start in the middle where my incision is going to be, and work my way out. So I start in the middle because it's going to go right there. So that's your cleanest spot. You work out in like a V pattern, and go to the outside where it's a little bit more dirty. I like to let that sit. There's a little bit of blood from where I blocked it with lidocaine. It's like, probably not, but okay. Mm. You okay? I'm fine. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so I through the skin, sub -Q. Fun fact, Derek is a little squeamish about this stuff. Are you stuff. really? Oh yeah, I hate this. And we're just gonna cut through the muscle bellies. There's three muscle bellies we're going through. There's the external, the internal. Oops, there we go. I like to feel when I get through. Sometimes she can feel a little bit, you'll see the muscles twitch because the block isn't always 100%, but good enough. You can see she's just standing here. Now, once I got into her peritoneal cavity, I'm gonna palpate her abdomen, explore, and I'm gonna feel the other side. And she's got a very, very large DA. And the way I can differentiate the abomasum from the rumen is it doesn't have a dorsal attachment. When I go over to this side, the rumen's gonna be attached to the spine, and then there's a large bubble of an organ on the other side of it that's not attached dorsally. So that's where I know where I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna take my needle and my tubing. <laughs> it's attached steam. there, so it's sealed. Sorry, I got distracted by the steam. That's okay. And then I'm gonna protect the needle, go across the other side of the abdomen, and then I'm going to deflate the displaced abomasum on this side. And then you can hear, if you really listen hard, it might fog up your camera. <laughs> Is it fogging it up? No. But you can hear it's whistling out of here. So now I'm gonna deflate 
It's about the size of a beach ball on the other side of our abdomen. So we're gonna let enough air out of there where it's not as buoyant anymore, and then we can flip it over to the right side, which is the correct side. From this side, it just looks like Tracy's hanging out. <laughs> Cow's chilling. But if I go up and over, her arm is in the side of the cow. <laughs> So Tracy, while we're letting the air out, this feels like a good time to talk about why we actually do a surgery instead of the- The roll and toggle. Roll and, yeah. what's it called? Roll and toggle. Yeah. So there's, there's actually three ways that I've done a DA. Well, four. There's a lot of ways to do it. Um, one way is roll and toggle, where you actually, you roll, you sedate the cow, get her down, and then you roll her onto her back. And then you actually use a trocar, which is a really big hollow needle and you put it through the body wall into the abomasum, and then you put a toggle in there, which is like a little piece of plastic, it's like a little T, and it has threads on it. And you put that in two places, you tie those together, and that tacks that to the body wall. Um, the problem with that, though, it's not 100% guaranteed that you got the abomasum. Sometimes you'll get intestine entrapped in there, or you might get the rumen, you might get something else, and there's more chance for peritonitis because it's not as sterile. Um, the other way, there's also a blind stitch method where you actually just take like a C-curve needle and you do the same thing, but with a stitch. Um, and then you can also do DAs from the left side as, or, or yeah, left side approach for the surgery. And then that involves tacking it to the ventral abdomen. Um, I prefer this side because I can bring it over to the proper side and then tack it where I want it. And I do an omenopexy approach. So Very I cool. do, yeah, I like it this way. That's why so, I this way. So it's, it's <laughs> more accurate, but it's more about veterinarian preference. Yes, it's definitely surgeon preference. Um, and uh, I like this way because I know it came to the right side. I can see what it looks like too. I can get a good um, visualization of the tissue. So then I know how it looks, if it looks like it's going to have a problem. Um, sometimes the tissue can be really necrotic or it can be falling apart, and then you know there's something else going on with the cow, and that will impact your prognosis. Thank you. Yep. So I know that's kind of gross, but every time you breathe, she breathes, you can see steam shooting out. Um, which is the inside most part of the abdomen. And now I'm doing my second layer of closure. So I actually include the muscle and the sub-Q tissue, the subcutaneous tissue. And then I'm gonna make this nice and pretty, get it all lined up so it's gonna heal well, and then we'll do the skin at the end. And cows heal fantastically from this. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty that is. She's still just chilling there. Yep. Clean her up. Clean her up. So we will start her on a regimen of pain medication, anti-inflammatory and an antibiotic, and then any supportive care she needs. So she'll probably need, she looks fairly hydrated, but she might benefit from some IV fluids. And Gave some them the to her this morning already. Oh, nice. Perfect. So yeah. then just make sure she's eating and drinking. And if she's not, then they can give her a dredge, which is some oral fluids. So yeah, should be good. When she says they, she means me. Yeah, <laughs> Derek will do. <laughs>